Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Apples and Tiaras vlog. If you are new here, my name is Charlotte and I am a fourth grade science and social studies teacher in the East Valley of Arizona. So in today's video, I thought I would take you guys through the process of teaching a standard. Oh, I have a lesson plan that I've had created. Um, Just to clarify, this lesson was created by one of the science trainers in our district. And I'm going to actually begin it today and then I'll take you guys along the whole journey uh, with the follow through of the lesson and then um, show you guys the results. <gasps> Good morning, things. <laughs> she wants a snack. Dingy wants a snack ball. Yeah, what do you want, Dingy, huh? I want to get... just want a snack. Want snack. Oh, thank you. You need a bath. Okay, so let me just start by telling you guys which standard I am teaching. So it is important for you to guys to, it's important for y'all to understand that Arizona has its own set of everything. Um, don't ask me why, I don't know, uh, but Arizona has its own Common Core ELA standards. We have our own Common Core Math standards. We have our own Science standards and we have our own Social Studies standards. They do correlate pretty closely with the rest of the world or I guess the rest of the nation. Um, standards wise, there's just a couple of little changes and differences in what grade level does what. So especially with science and social studies, wh who does what is a little bit different than everyone else in the country. So the standard that I'm going to be covering is 4.E1U1.5. Use models to explain seismic waves and their effect on the earth. Okay, so my learning target across this lesson is going to be I can use models to explain how energy affects a system. Something that I learned through my trainings was to try not to reveal everything that you're going to be doing in your learning target. So instead of putting, I can use models to explain waves and their effect on the earth, you just say, I can use models to explain how energy affects a system. Because through inquiry-based learning, your students or my students will discover what seismic waves are. And they're going to be using seismic waves to explain an earthquake. So I don't want to just right off the bat tell them that they're going to use seismic waves because it kind of deletes the mystery. I can use models to explain how energy affects a system. Day one is to engage. So today I'm going to be asking students to create a see, think, wonder chart. They're going to be making observations. They're going to be asking questions. They're going to be thinking about what's going on. Um, they're going to watch two videos of an earthquake in Nepal, and they're going to be just writing down the things that they're observing. What's wrong? And then we're going to create a question board using Jamboard. If you guys don't know what Jamboard is, it's this really cool like virtual um, like collaboration board where kids can add and delete and change um, questions or sticky notes. Um, this is gonna be my first time using Jamboard with this group. And so it's going to be interesting. We're gonna have to do a little bit of like etiquette training with them in the sense that, you know, you don't take someone else's sticky note off of the Jamboard and change it. You don't move them. Once you add a sticky note, um, Miss Valdez is the only one who can change and move them. So that's gonna be kind of part of this lesson too but I will attempt to film as much as I can from today's lesson as possible. And then um, as always, just check in with you guys at every different level of the lesson because it is separated into different days. Um, day two is um, gonna be taking place probably on Friday this week because we do have state testing tomorrow. So this is going to be an expanded overtime video.
So the very first thing that I did with this lesson was I actually gave my students a pre-assessment. So um, a lot of times teachers in math or ELA will pre-test their students to see what they already know about a specific standard or maybe a topic that they're getting ready to teach. And so the same thing applies for science. Um, I do wanna be able to measure student growth. And so what I've done is I've created a pre-assessment for this standard. And all I did was I asked my students to draw me a concept model and they already know what those are. Concept model is a drawing or a picture or a model of how something works or how something happens. So I asked them to draw me a model of an earthquake. Okay, now this is before I even introduce the standard. They have no idea what's coming. All I did was ask them to draw me a picture of an earthquake. Um, I did include some vocabulary words. I said, um, in your model, you can use words like, and I put words like wavelength, amplitude, epicenter, focus, energy, plates. Um, and then I instruct them to use labels and symbols to explain. And when I teach my students how to make models, I'm very clear that they need to label as much as possible because when I go back to look at their picture, if things aren't labeled, I'm not gonna understand what they are because in fact, fourth graders are not the best artists. <laughs> I'm not either, but so when I ask them <laughs> to draw a picture of an earthquake, um, these are some of the things that I get. Okay, so this kid's pretty spot on. We've got the plates moving in different directions. Um, the earth is shaking and she's got a, an answer or a key here. So I can see the plates and moving and then the ground shaking. So this is pretty good. So what she's going to be able to learn is that seismic waves move in different directions um, and that they are responsible for the movement of the plates. So it'll kind of go a little bit deeper next time. This one's funny. So this is a pretty amazing. Um, this is one of my gifted students. So you can tell that she's got some prior knowledge here. Pretty basic ones. <laughs> this one involved Ross. Here's another really good one. She's got the plates passing each other. She's got some pretty good prior knowledge. Okay, I'm not sure what this one. Oh, we have a car crash. Okay, so the ground is shaking. The cars are crashing. Um, yeah, come look. And then we have ones like these, where it's just the earth shaking rapidly back and forth, ground breaks. So I'm wondering if this is supposed to be the center of the earth, in which that's pretty amazing. Um, we've got our focus and maybe an epicenter somewhere. So something that this kid has got some pretty good prior knowledge. So when I instruct my students to draw a model of something, I try really hard not to help them in any way. Because if I disrupt their creative process and their thinking, it's going to sway them in the direction that I don't want them to go yet. Because I want them to discover what it is that causes an earthquake. I want them to realize what seismic waves are. I want them to find out what a focus and an epicenter is. If I just give them that information, they're probably not going to remember it at all or not as long as they need to. But what I will do when this whole lesson is over is I will actually give my students their drawings back. And throughout this unit i will be able to give them their drawings to see if they want to add anything or erase anything from their models and then at the end the final assessment will be to draw a picture of an earthquake again including all of the different vocabulary words that they have learned throughout the lesson and they'll be able to compare and contrast their first picture to their final picture and their final picture will actually be the assessment that i use i also have a couple of assessment questions just from like my district's assessment tool that have the kids choosing models that represent the information correctly. So it's gonna be two separate um, assessments, but they're both gonna assess them on the same learning target. Hey, you guys, so it is Thursday. We are not doing state testing today. I don't know why, but I had it wrong. But anyway, today is day two of my lesson. 
and today is the research and investigate day. So this is actually supposed to take like a couple of days. I'm just gonna put you guys here. So this is actually supposed to take a couple of days. Students will explore waves and make observations. They will then revisit the question board and their initial models to make revisions. So what I'm gonna give them today is the opportunity to kind of think back to sound waves because we did a unit on sound waves and um, so they already kind of know about waves themselves and like how they move and what they do like high pitch ones are kind of squished together and tall and low pitch waves are like smaller and kind of more spread out um, so we're going to kind of go back to that um, we're going to do some making of waves with strings and ropes um, and honestly, I'm not going to do everything on here that it says or that, um, I had planned because they already did an investigation on waves. So I don't want to like overdo that and just make it like playtime. So I might create, um, I might kind of push that one off to the side and maybe do like one demonstration for the whole class rather than everybody do one. And then day three is when students will do some reading and investigatory research about earthquakes. They will add notes to their notebooks for future reference. Students will revisit the question board to answer any answer or ask any questions. Students revisit their models of explanation. So what I'm gonna have the kids do today after I do like one little model um, is begin researching. And I've already preloaded like a whole ton of resources into Google Classroom. There are articles in there. There are videos in there for them to watch. There's some read to me books in there. Just like a hodgepodge of pretty much anything and everything that I thought could help them. Lots of different reading levels. And so I'm gonna give them the opportunity to just kind of like free research today. And what I'm gonna do is have them take two column notes, which they already know how to do and set up so we're gonna just start by calling it earthquake research and then we're gonna just put each question in each topic area so that when the kids are researching, they know, oh, well, I'm looking for that question, looking to answer that question. And then um, they can write their answers here. So I'm gonna quickly just show you guys the Jamboard walls that they made yesterday. Okay, so this is my homeroom's Jamboard. And what we did was um, I had the kids watch two clips of an earthquake and we did a see, think, wonder. So they had to write down the things that they noticed, the things that they were thinking, and then any questions that they had. So they obviously came to the conclusion of, you know, they were watching an earthquake, but um, they didn't really know much about it. So then they were able they were able to post one question that they had on the Jamboard. And then what I did was I moved them around. They helped me a little bit. They We moved all the questions around to kind of like group them together based on the type of question or if we had any repeats, we deleted them. So um, this question, where do earthquakes start? That's a really good one. They're gonna be able to look up. They're gonna find like focus and epicenter through researching that question. How do earthquakes happen? They're gonna be able to see that like waves are sent throughout the center of the earth and different locations in the earth, depending on pressure. How do earthquakes form? Same kind of question, that's why we grouped it together. Um, how do tectonic plates form? So this one isn't exactly related to the topic, but I'm still going to let them research that. Um, what was the cause of the earthquake in the city in Nepal? Um, that was where the earthquake we were watching took place. So they could research that earthquake, maybe see like how many people died, how big it was. Um, how does the earthquake stop? That's a good one. How do earthquakes break windows and how powerful can an earthquake get? So this one has me thinking like they'll probably find the Richter scale with that one. And then my other class had quite a few more good questions, scientific questions that are researchable or investigated or can be investigated. Um, I wonder if earthquakes normally shake from side to side or front to back or both. That's a really good question because there are different types of seismic waves and they're going to be able to figure that out through researching that one. Um, I wonder how the road moves from side to side. I wonder what caused this movement and why. Um, do earthquakes do anything but shake, crack, and make buildings fall? Very good question. Um, and then this is my other one. Um, I'm going to delete that one. 
Liz, that was there. I think someone added that later on. Um, so what I did was I had to screenshot these because I really can't at this point trust that my kids aren't going to go in and like change anything. So I did screenshot them and I pasted them in my lesson slides so that I can refer back to them if needed and then um, compare it to the actual Jamboard. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is actually remove the link that I put the Jamboard on so that the kids can't even access it anymore. So what I do is I, I, in my agenda slides, I link things in these tools. I could be like, okay, click on the Chromebook and that's gonna link you to the Jamboard. Click on the notebook and that's gonna um, take you to some research. Um, these came from like a TPT pack, but anyway, so today we're gonna just do some research. And um, so I have a whole, um, material right here that is filled with places for them to go to research about earthquakes and things like that. And they're obviously going to see like seismic waves. They're going to investigate that. So once we do all of our research, um, we'll kind of like share out and I'll have the kids kind of like walk around and share and they can add to their list and they can add to their notes. And then we're going to refer back to our Jamboard and see if we answered any of those questions. If we did, we can fill in some answers to those. And then the next day is I'm actually going to do some, some direct instruction. Even though my new standards and my science teacher trainer says not to do um, direct instruction, I still think that it's important to do so to make sure that they're learning exactly what I need them to learn. Um, and just to kind of drill in what they've researched and make sure that it's validated. So I do have a PowerPoint. It's a short one, um, but it has a lot of really cool graphics and videos and the kids are doing drawings. So like they fill in the blank. These are closed notes. They can keep them in their notebooks when we're done. Um, they're drawing the focus in the epicenter. They're looking at parts of waves. They're drawing waves. And then they're looking at the three different types of seismic waves. And then when they're done with that, we're going to do a sorting activity where they take all of these little squares and kind of fill in this chart to show understanding of seismic waves and practice with them. Um, the reason why it's really important to do this direct instruction is because the students are still being tested on this information. And so I don't want to risk them not finding exactly what they need. Um, in the event that they don't, I need to be able to make sure that I have that information for them. So that will probably be done on Monday, depending on how it goes today, if they finish research today. Um, and then I also have this really cool aftershock earthquake lab that we'll use next week when we, after we've learned about earthquakes, we will um, do a couple of labs where the kids create um, earthquake proof structures because that's another one of my standards so this one will be really fun i'll probably have it in a station we'll have, probably do some sort of station activity next week um, just so that everybody can get a chance to put their hands on this because this is really cool all right so the kids are starting to do some research here don't worry i'm not getting your face in it just getting what you're looking at so what are you searching for right now Okay. Well, this is going to show you how what type of ground moves and how it moves. Slowest waves arrive last. What website are you on? Channel. Another great one. What are you learning? 
playing right now. Seismic waves are vibrating movement of the ground. Isn't it interesting how sound waves are vibrations oh, and so wow. are seismic waves, but they just vibrate something else? What do sound waves know. vibrate? Um, I'm just going to put a little air. air. Yeah, and seismic waves vibrate what? The ground. So they both vibrate something, right? my friends so it is day three of my earthquake unit so I wanted to share with you guys what the plan is for today so on day three normally day three would end up being the research day day two would be the investigation day um, but because we already covered waves in a different lesson I decided to forego the investigation day and kind of push it until later because the kids already know what a wave is um, based on the sound waves lesson that I taught. But today on my day three, we're gonna revisit the question board. So the kids are gonna be able to go back to the questions that they asked. And if any of them are able to answer them, they're going to share those answers out loud so everyone can hear them. And we'll actually jot the answers down up on the board. And then we're going to do some earthquake note taking. This is going to be something that is uh, like whole group and it's more of like a direct instruction kind of model. Um, so I do have a PowerPoint here, but it's more of a close note. So all of the red words, they'll be filling in the blanks on their notes. Um, and they're just really small little like composition size notes. But what I like about this is it gives them diagrams to draw because later, and I'll refer back to this. Oh, I got to rewrite it. I had to take it down for testing. Um, later, they're going to be drawing creating a model that explains how seismic waves affect the earth, which means they're drawing an earthquake. So they're gonna want to make sure that they have this because this is a key point um, in their drawing, or at least it should be. Um, and then again, these are um, characteristics of waves, um, amplitude, wavelength, focus, and then I like these because they actually give the animation of the waves. I believe I found this PowerPoint on Teachers Pay Teachers a while ago. So if you look up like seismic waves of earthquakes, I think you'll find it. Um, but I really like all the graphics in it, which is why I like to use it and not like skip that part. So that's what we're going to do today. And then if there's time, I do have a sorting activity, which I'll show you. Looks like this, this is the answer key, but basically each group would get a blank one of these. It explains what the seismic waves are up here again, so it's just another cheat sheet. And then the kids get a baggie with all of these cut out, so obviously this would be blank, and they have to place them in the right spot. So it says like seismic waves, also known as, like their nickname, the speed, what they travel through, and then the type of motion that they have. So then it's kind of like a quick check, and I can actually use this throughout, like I can use this for um, small group. I can use this for individual assessment. Um, so kind of nice. And I did get them laminated and I had my student aide cut them out so I can use them again and again and again. I just have to get them to flatten out. I'm thinking maybe if I like glue them onto some cardstock or something, they might flatten out a little bit. So anyways, that is day three of my earthquake lesson. Day four is actually going to be some engineering stuff. So once they've learned about earthquakes. I might actually give them their drawings tomorrow to update um, so that they can kind of like add things and then I'll actually let them use their original drawings to make their final drawings. Um, but this one's cool. It says, so this actual lesson plan that I'm reading from actually came from a woman who does all of our science trainings. Um, this was her like example lesson. Um, I actually had 
I had read it forever ago and I knew that I wasn't going to be teaching earthquakes until after spring break. So that's why I've held on to it. Um, and I really like it because it does model like what a lesson should look like with our cross-cutting concepts. So you can then move to an engineering approach and question students about buildings, which probably came up on their question board. You can have them design and create buildings to test. There are different links below to inexpensive ways to create shake tables for testing. So I'm probably gonna end up using Jello with toothpicks and um, marshmallows because it's the cheapest one. But I also have a shake table that I actually ordered last year from my principal. She always asks me every year, what do you need for your classroom? So I actually ordered this. I believe this is from Amazon, but it's the Aftershock Earthquake Lab. And I'm hoping that this can be reusable because what I'm thinking is, is I'll give kids like, I'll split them up into their groups and then I'll give each team like 15 minutes to build an earthquake proof structure. Hey you guys, so it is now a few days later and I wanted to update y'all on the lesson progress. I think I showed you guys the footage of the PowerPoint presentation that I showed the kids that showed different models of different seismic waves and the directions that they move and then the notes that the kids took. Um, so there were some parts where they can draw, some places for vocabulary, um, and then lots of places for drawing models of different waves and different parts of earthquakes. So after we were done taking notes here, we did a couple more days of clarifying. So I had kids working on boom cards that were related to earthquakes, just kind of like making sure to clear up any misconceptions. I also pulled quite a few kids to my table to reteach information, people who still had questions, um, catching students up who weren't here. And then yesterday was the day that my kids actually redrew their models. So I wanted to share, um, I created a rubric for my students and I shared the rubric with them ahead of time and then I gave them their final drawing papers to draw from. And so I'm gonna just share with you guys the rubric. So I built this on Rubistar. If you have never used Rubistar, it is a really nice resource for rubric making. And I feel like rubrics are the best way to grade things like drawing models because it's hard to look at a model and really like determine whether or not it shows something correctly if you don't have a set like expectation of what it should look like. So I actually did make a rubric with Rubistar. It looks like this and it goes from a category four, three, two, and one. A four would be a proficient mastered rubric that shows everything that has been learned throughout the week. A three would be pretty close, like most everything is there, um, just certain things are missing. A two is like very minimal, and then a one is like hardly anything at all. So um, it does go from like all vocabulary is listed and represented, most vocabulary, some, not many. The model shows, so there's a concept section. So the model shows that earthquakes begin at a focus and move outward towards an epicenter. The model shows that earthquakes begin underground and travel toward the surface of the earth. So the difference between that would just be like, maybe in their model it shows that, here I'll show you guys my, let me show you what like the model should look like or would look like if it was a proficient model. So this is like a model that I might have shown my students, but I didn't actually show them this. This is just something that I created. If I was to do this assignment, this is what I would draw. So if a student draws something like this, where there's like a point and then the waves are traveling up toward the center or toward the surface of the earth, I would count that as a three because it shows waves traveling from underground toward the surface of the earth. Um, if the model shows an earthquake beginning underground, that would be a two, but if nothing's traveling toward the center or toward the surface, that it wouldn't be a three because it needs to show that the movement of waves travel from the center or from underground to the surface of the earth. Um, so then the one would be the model does not show a starting point for an earthquake. It just shows like the ground shaking. Um, then there's a wave section. The model features three types of waves moving, uh, moving to this from the underground to the surface and are labeled. And then it moves down to like different types of waves, wiggly lines drawn, um, some sort of wave and then no waves at all. 
And then the last one, the model is detailed, shows layers of the earth versus the model is somewhat detailed and shows some of earth's features. So maybe it doesn't show like the mantle and the crust, but it does show like two plates coming together. The model shows separation of underground and the earth's surface. That's really important. If the kids do not make the connection between earthquakes occurring under the ground and coming to the surface, then they don't understand. There has to be some sort of separation. And then a one would be the model does not show any separation between the surface of the earth and underground. So I did provide them with a rubric before um, they drew the model and they were also allowed to use their earthquake notes these because these notes explain different vocabulary and with the way we're supposed to teach science today they tell us not to front load the kids with vocabulary but to allow them to discover the vocabulary and perhaps just define it for them so i did give them access to their notes and then um i just put on the board actually i'll put it up there the slide that i showed them so this was the slide that was showing when they drew their final models. It just says, draw a concept model of an earthquake using the terms below. P waves, S waves, L waves, epicenter, focus, plates, energy, fault. Those were the words that are actually listed on the rubric that they're supposed to include, that they're supposed to include in their drawing. So those are the important points that they researched and found um, that they were going to then transfer to their models. Um, so then I gave them time to draw and a lot of them showed major growth. Even some of my kids who are at Learning Lab, my special, um, my IEP kids, they even showed a ton of growth. Um, so this was like a super proficient model. There's a lot going on, but you can clearly see. So the earthquake is occurring over here, the focus. And what he's showing you is that the P waves are traveling through the center of the earth. The S waves are coming out the other end to the crust and then the L waves. And he's also showing you the epicenter. He gives you a magnitude. Um, and then he's showing which direction the waves are moving. The crust is all separated into different plates. Um, so this is a four out of four. Like that is a proficient drawing. Um, then I'll show you one that isn't quite proficient. So this one, this one's okay. So this one has um, two plates labeled, a focus. Um, it has a P wave down occurring underground. So that was something that I was looking for. P waves and S waves are underground. Um, the L waves are the ones that are on the surface. So this one's got an epicenter, seismic waves, an L wave labeled. So this would be a three. I would label this as a three because she has most of the vocabulary words and she has Earth's features that are needed and you can clearly see that there are waves moving. So I would definitely give that a three. Um, and then we also have some that are not quite a three. Um, they have all of the pieces, but they're not exactly represented correctly. So this would be a student that I pulled for a reteach and I actually did pull this student for a reteach. I'm gonna cover her name, but so I believe that this side of the drawing is showing without an earthquake and this side is showing with an earthquake. So you have your focus and she labeled the parts of a wave and her epicenter, but to me, this doesn't show me underground. This is a road, or at least that's the way I interpret it. Um, and I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. I think maybe that's the road, I'm not really sure. So I did pull her to clear some misconceptions with this one because there wasn't really a clear separation of underground, above ground, earth surface, anything like that. So anyway, um, I did pull quite a few students who were either absent or who did not score a three or a four on their drawing. We cleared up some misconceptions. I showed them this model, gave them some clarifications, and then I hid this model and asked them to go back and draw another one. And they were able to, they didn't copy this exactly, a lot of them were able to create their own versions of them. Um, and so that's exactly what we want. We want them to be able to really dump the concept that they are thinking on paper and not the one that I'm thinking because then it's just my concept and not theirs. So I'm actually gonna hide this because my next class is coming in. I do have a few students I need to pull from that class and I don't want them to pre-see that model. So anyway, 
that wraps up my earthquake unit and um it's been really it's been really interesting a lot of the control gets moved from me to them and um, it is hard to give up control as a teacher because we want to be able to be like okay this is what you need to learn this is how you do it but giving up the control and giving it to them is is hard it's a lot harder than you would think it is it's something that you have to get used to so anyways hopefully this video was helpful if you are a science teacher um, even if you're not a science teacher and you're looking for more of an inquiry based um, lesson structure this can definitely be something that you can do um, not just with science but also social studies asking them what they want to learn about a certain topic and allowing them the time to research it and report their findings is definitely something that gives students control of what they're learning so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, these glasses by the way are gonna be linked down in the description box they are from Zimp optical they're my favorite favorite glasses brand um, they're going to be linked down below as long as, as well as a coupon code. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.